Today I'm playing the rest of Travis Hunter's college career and not stopping until he makes the NFL. He was the number one player in his high school class and he's been special in college so far, but after choking a 29 point lead to Stanford, Colorado is 4-3 and three, and Travis Hunter wants to at least make a bowl game to end his sophomore year, so he needs to win at least two of these last five. Also, later on in this video when he's a junior, I'll be trying to get Colorado into the 12 team playoff, but it won't be easy since they're joining the Big 12 and that's just one of the five goals I have to accomplish with Travis Hunter before he leaves for the NFL. Like always, if I fail even just one of those, I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter. And trust me, I'll be working Travis Hunter super hard in practice to try and make sure all that stuff happens. He is awesome whenever he gets out in space. And even though he's already a super high overall in game, I figure it can't hurt to continue to progress him on both sides of the ball. After practice though, it was time to take on UCLA. And we've already gotten them to a third and nine where they're just gonna try to pick something up short and that's not gonna go the distance. What's so fun about Travis Hunter is now we get to go out and use him as a wide receiver. But because he was tackled short, it is now fourth and three and he is going to get wide open on the cover two which is going to go to the five. We're now down on the goal line and Shadur Sanders throws an interception so it's no surprise that here in the fourth quarter we are still trailing to UCLA and Carson Steele might get a big run here. He just broke a tackle. I don't think anybody's going to catch him and this is not good for the Buffaloes. Travis Hunter is really good but he can only make so much of a difference getting another catch here and down on the goal line. He is not breaking the press here but Shadur Sanders is just going to scramble in so we still have a chance in this game if we're able to eventually stop Carson Steele steal and Deion Sanders is not happy right now. He has run the ball all over us all day and we need to hit Dante Moore here. It wasn't a great tackle but what's important is it is now third and 12 and this is gonna get us the ball back. All we wanted was this opportunity and Travis Hunter is streaking downfield. Shadur Sanders is gonna underthrow it to the UCLA defender though and what was he thinking there? This is gonna get taken back to the crib and we are gonna lose but if Shadur would have just set his feet on this throw the ball might have actually gone the right distance. All I'm gonna say is if we're ever gonna have success with Colorado a lot of improvement is needed, and I'm not sure how we're going to beat Oregon State. Dylan Edwards started us off with a 75-yard touchdown run, though, so maybe there is some hope. And here on third and seven, there's so many players on this side of the field that have to be covered. Travis Hunter's not going to get back to that ball. So to be honest, up to this point, he really hasn't done anything that great, but he just ran right by the cornerback. And there's a ton of space between him and all of those defenders. The issue, though, has been the fact that our defense hasn't gotten many stops, and making a bowl game with Colorado is going to be hard. Here in the third quarter, it's still all tied up. Travis Hunter's going to break that press though and take it almost to the crib but he was knocked down just a bit short so he wouldn't get a touchdown on that drive and with about two minutes left it's all tied at 35 which means we've continued to go back and forth with Oregon State but now they're not stopping Hunter and if he's able to keep creating separation Shadur Sanders will keep hooking up with him. It's been a long way down the field but it's going to end with a touchdown and this is the type of upset that would give Colorado some momentum for the future. Here on second and 10 they're not going to do a thing and with four seconds left they're just going to have one last chance at a Hail Mary. I'm going to try to intercept it with Travis Hunter by getting over to this football, but another one of my teammates got it instead, and hopefully we keep having success versus Arizona. We don't have any chance at winning the Pac-12, but Folsom Field has stayed packed anyways, and I can't wait to see how well this team does next year with a bit more of development, but Shadur Sanders just underthrew a ball again, and I think Travis Hunter is going to have to be on his DK Metcalf type timing here if he's going to catch this player which he does. I don't know why Shadur keeps on throwing it off of his back foot, but all of his struggles in this game have led to us being down 21 with a few minutes left in the third, but Travis Hunter just put multiple players in the spin cycle, and it's a shame that our defense just can't seem to keep up with Arizona. They're about to score another touchdown, and Travis Hunter just got clotheslined, so it's no surprise that the Wildcats are going to beat us, and both of these final two matchups are not going to be easy, but our best chance of the two is against Washington State, so we need to take care of business in our last home game. If we're going to come out on top of it, I think the only way to do so is by force feeding the ball to Travis Hunter and I'm very surprised that he couldn't hold on to this pass but to get him in a little bit of a rhythm we're gonna go with some jet sweeps and he never even got the ball. Here on third and six we're going underneath with another wide receiver screen for a touchdown and we like to go with straight man coverage down inside the red zone which is gonna work out. By the third quarter though we are now trailing and this is such a great route from Travis Hunter. He has gotten right by number 30 and this is what we need to tie it back up. What a play from him to run by everyone and he is the one bright spot on this team I can trust. Everyone already knows how good he is, so he's had multiple breakout games already, but this one feels really special, and that sets a school record for touchdowns in a season, with this one just being the warm-up as he's only a junior, but Washington State continues to tie it up, so we're gonna have to figure out a way to respond back, and on this jet sweep, he should actually take the handoff. This one is gonna go for about five, but what's important is this third and goal, and he is wide open. Looking back on this play, I'm not sure how he held onto the football, but I control the entire outcome as we play on both sides of the 
the ball. And I can't believe we're watching the Cougars punt it back to us. We just need to pick up a few first downs and all I'm good for is blocking on this play. But now we are just one run away and this needs to go for a first, which it does. Colorado is bowl eligible and it's pretty much all because of Travis Hunter. So it's no surprise that he won player of the week. And that's gonna complete our first of five challenges in this video. The rest of them will all have to come next year. And this is a rough way to end the regular season, but we're making a bowl game. So I can't even be upset that we're gonna lose to Utah. And we did all that to play in the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. The turnaround Deion Sanders has had at Colorado has been incredible. But if we're gonna make that 12 team playoff next year, we have to be able to beat teams like Duke. And early on in the game, it's important that we get Travis Hunter going with about a 25 yard reception. His talent makes him so good on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. But what is Shadur Sanders doing here? And I think this is gonna turn into a pick six because even though I've chased him the whole way, I'm just not able to catch the linebacker. So I should be really upset that he turned the ball over, but because he's regressed so much to end the year, he's gonna return for his senior season. And if Travis Hunter is gonna go off, it's very important to have him force feeding us the ball, but he has just been off the marks today. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna lose this bowl game. And if not, it's because we've been able to make a fourth quarter comeback where Travis Hunter is spinning into the end zone. He made a great play there and we're closing in on finishing out another drive, but I was not expecting him to drop that. And on third and goal, we're gonna go with the fade route, which is not gonna result in a touchdown. Dion must have balls though, because I'm surprised we're going for it on fourth and goal where we're gonna not hold on to it again. And this one is all on Xavier Weaver. From what we've seen, our team's gonna have to improve a ton, but I believe we can do it in the off season. And I'm just thankful that we still have a chance in this game where Travis Hunter's gonna go up for the 50-50 ball, but he just left us all extremely disappointed. And what is Shadur doing? I don't know why he tried to throw it into that window, but here on fourth and 10, he's gonna have to deliver this one right on the money. And that's the exact look that we wanted there, but it was very solid defense. So we're gonna need to take this loss personally and just appreciate that Travis Hunter already set a school record, but on the defensive side of the ball, he could definitely improve. So that's gonna be the main focus during all of these offseason trainings. And on this play, we are gonna shoot the gap perfectly, but Dylan Edwards just laid us out on the ground. So clearly we still have plenty of work to do with Travis Hunter. And on this one, we're gonna make a tackle. As for the offensive side of things, he's looking better than ever as he's able to toast by these corners. And whenever he's not in on defense, our unit out there looks extremely rough, giving up a lot of big plays. With all of that work though, he's gotten up to a 99 overall. And if we're gonna win the big 12, he's gonna have to carry us hard. To be honest, our schedule doesn't start off that tough, but near the end of the year, it'll definitely get a bit harder. And it looks like Travis Hunter isn't in the Heisman race yet. But since we're projected to finish ninth in the big 12, I guess that's expected, even though we're up to a shocking 95 overall. And we're starting the season against Colorado State. So this rivalry is back and on an early third and 14, they are not gonna convert. Now, Travis Hunter hasn't had a great start offensively, but on this play, he's gonna make an incredible catch. And I have no idea how he was able to hold on to this football. It might lead to us only getting a field goal, but that's better than nothing. And he is wide open here, but Shadur saw it a little too late. So we have to take our three. And what's important is how we do on the defensive side of things as we are going to force a sack. Travis Hunter hasn't been thrown at much, but that's because he's such a lockdown corner. No quarterback looks in his direction. And that's a good issue to have, but a problem for getting defensive highlights. It would be awesome if we could hold them on this third and goal though. And that is what we should have done. But Cameron Silman Craig just didn't put his hands up here. And I can guarantee if Travis Hunter was over there, it would have been picked, but it is what it is. Instead of running his routes, he's kind of just been finding the open space in the defense. And it's working out well because approaching halftime, he's going to make the touchdown grab. He's also already gone for over 100 receiving yards and he keeps getting peppered with targets. So it seems like Shader's finally realizing he needs to look in his direction more. And down here on the goal line, he is wide open. He's already gotten himself two touchdowns, but I'd love for him to pair it with an interception or something. And he is going to get a tackle here, which is going to stop them from picking up the first. So it's safe to say that he's contributed a ton for us potentially winning this game. And after Dylan Edwards rushed it in, we have gotten them to a fourth and five where they're not going to convert. So we're going to start the season beating our rivals. And this was an amazing performance from Travis Hunter. I am curious how we'll do against some real competition. But before that happens, we get to play Nebraska, which should be an easy win for us. And what's crazy is Travis Hunter was going to go on to play cornerback in the NFL, but that could be changing. He's been so dominant as a wide receiver, stealing balls from his teammates and spinning out of there to get some extra yards. So now some NFL NFL scouts are starting to think he might be better suited on that side of the ball, but Shadar just tried to force it into a tight window. And compared to last year, he's been peppering Hunter with targets, but sometimes he's just not open. On this play, all he can really do is try to block as Dylan Edwards takes it in. And since Nebraska just can't move the ball, we're going to be able to take an even bigger lead on the Cornhuskers. I'm embarrassed for them, but they haven't been able to get past midfield. So in the end, we're going to beat them 28 to zero, but I just gave up a first down. Travis Hunter is trying so hard to bait them into an interception, but it just doesn't seem to happen. And Nebraska fans are just used to it at this point. Our team feels like one that could actually finish
finish inside the top 15. But even though we've been playing well, we're still not receiving votes to make it into the AP poll. And that's with the fourth best defense in the country. It's a small sample size, but we've held teams to eight points per game. And all it took was Deion Sanders having some more time to get some transfers in, but also Travis Hunter stepping up even more. We all knew that he was good, but I don't think anybody expected him to be putting up the stats that he has so far. And this is a big fourth and six, but they're going with man-to-man -man coverage on him, which just isn't a good idea. I'm not sure why we're not kicking the field goal here on fourth and 14, but Deion Sanders is being aggressive and it's going to pay off. So I don't even know what to say is this one's getting out of hand quicker than the Nebraska one. You'd think that they'd have a plan to stop Travis Hunter, but he's just been finding all of the gaps in their defense and his hands have also gotten a lot better this season. Down on the goal line, they have him in man-to-man -man coverage, but he kind of got clamped up there. So he's been moved over to the slot and this time he's going to hold on. The longer this one goes on for as well, I just wish that they would put somebody in. Travis Hunter is going to get the interception though, and that is what he's been waiting for. Can he take this for six? No, but it was still a beautiful bait from him. And immediately after on the offensive side of the ball, we hit him with a bubble screen, but Arizona State blew it up. And after that, we pulled him just so we could get the win without him getting hurt. It's important he stays healthy the entire year, but now we have to travel to play at the bounce house. And it's so weird that this is a big 12 matchup, but Shadur Sanders is already throwing interceptions. So thankfully we get it back and I'm hoping that this next drive can result in a touchdown, but it won't be easy. The Knights actually have a really tough defense, but they're giving up the slant. And here on third and nine, I'm gonna to try to bait them into an interception, but they just take their check down. We've done a good job in driving it down the field again, and I don't think I'm too open, but the corner is. So UCF is already in a position where they need to do something, and our defense has been so solid on them all day as they just can't get anywhere. With a minute left in the first quarter, I don't know if they're trying to press us, but that is not a good idea because Travis Hunter is going to run around that cornerback, and does he have the stamina to make it all the way to the end zone? He gets a perfect block, and this is exactly why I wanted to play the rest of his career because this is so much fun. With about two minutes left in the the fourth, the Knights are trying to make a late comeback, but we are just locking up the run, so they have no choice but to pass it on fourth and 11, where they go with the halfback screen, and we're going to get over to it, I guess. But Travis Hunter has been struggling to make some tackles on defense, so that's why it's so important that on the offensive side of things, he has been crushing it, because hopefully he can still get in the Heisman race, and UCF just wasted some of the sickest jerseys ever. Right now, Travis Hunter is fifth in the country for receiving yards, but he is nowhere to be seen on the Heisman watch list, so it's crucial that he does well against an FCS school. North Dakota State's a good one, but they've been on the decline, so I have a feeling he's going to have multiple opportunities to make a difference, and you can already tell it's going to be a long day for them because they have him in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I don't see that working out very well for them. I understand that some of these teams Colorado has faced to start the year have been a lot weaker, but we're giving up a big play, and just to confirm, that was Shiloh Sanders' man. Travis Hunter has yet to give up a single yard, and on this play, he is sticking with his man like glue, so I'm starting to wonder if North Dakota State's ever going to even get on the board, and was that a one-handed catch. Travis Hunter's ability as a wide receiver just keeps getting better. And here on a fourth and five, if they're not going to guard the drag underneath, we're going to take that all day. If he's going to have a Heisman campaign, he needs another touchdown or two though. And I wish the quarterback would at least look to this side of the field on some of these plays, but they always go to the opposite one. So they've just accepted that he is going to lock up and maybe we can force an interception here, but the quarterback won't throw it. The end of the third quarter is approaching, so he's probably about to get pulled. And there's just no reason he should have dropped that ball. He's had a really good game, so it won't matter too much, but he could have cleared 200 yards if he would have just held on to the football, and that would have made this stat line look even better. On the bright side, we're finally ranked inside the top 25, and our defense is ranked number one in the country, so there's a lot of attention on Travis Hunter, but we have to make sure that we continue to win, and on West Virginia's first drive, it's third and 14 already, where they're going to get nowhere. I see that this time there's going to be an impact player guarding Travis Hunter, but let's just throw it up to him anyways and see what happens as he catches it, and I'm starting to wonder if there's anything that he can't do. He's already scored like 10 touchdowns this year. And he's going for another on this play, which he's going to get. I'm not sure how this end around is going to go as Shadur Sanders didn't even hand it off to him, but maybe we can pick up all of that lost yardage plus more on this play where it's going to be intercepted by West Virginia instead. I understand that up to this point, we really haven't faced anybody too difficult, but I still expect us to go out and beat West Virginia. And here we just got to make a tackle with Travis Hunter, but we can't. The Mountaineers are about to tie it up 14 to 14. And as a DB with all of those linemen up there, I don't like this situation, but we get the interception. And I know it wasn't Travis Hunter that did it, but that still makes a huge difference if we can score a touchdown in the half. I have to give credit to the Mountaineers so far for locking up Travis Hunter on offense, though, as he has not had as good of a game as he normally does. Because besides that one mossed catch, he's caught very few balls. But on this play, he is going to steal it from Jimmy Horn Jr. and dive into the end zone. That was such a crucial play. And they're in Wildcat, so I knew the run was coming. And right now, the impact corner is not guarding Travis Hunter. So that's going to be another easy big game. If this is cover two, I'm going straight up the seam. But Shadur Sanders throws 
throws it in Jimmy Horn Jr.'s direction instead, and that was intercepted. What a terrible read. Luckily for us, though, we would get a stop, and now I'm open for a touchdown. So if all continues to go right, we're going to leave with a win. This is a halfback screen to CJ Donaldson, where I'm going to get in and hit him. But because he got the first down, we're going to need a stop on third and long. And am I able to bait this ball? No, I'm not. That's how the third quarter is going to end. And I feel like if Travis would have put his hands up there, he would have picked it. But now they have him on a blitz for the first time, and he couldn't get in on Garrett Green, but we're still going to get the sack. So in the end, it was a long day for the Mountaineers. And halfway through the season, we're still undefeated. That means right now we are tied for first place in the Big 12, and we should just continue to climb the polls. But our schedule has a couple of tough games on it, like at Kansas and at Utah. So I'm just happy that after Travis Hunter won Big 12 Player of the Week, he was thrown into the Heisman race, and right now he's projected to win it. It took a while, but the game is finally respecting him. And if we're going to make the playoffs, we cannot lose to Kansas. Besides them in Utah, we honestly have a cupcake schedule, so we probably wouldn't make it in at 10-2. And, and I'm thankful that we haven't had to play anybody difficult, but I don't know if we're going to be ready for the playoffs by the time we get there, if we're able to make it. Deion Sanders got to use the transfer portal again, so this isn't the same roster that lost to Stanford, but it is only a second year here, so there are going to be some weak spots, and Shadar gets in. Here on a third and two, I almost wanted to send the blitz myself, but he's going to throw it deep on me, and I got burnt. That is a rare Travis Hunter mistake, but he's trying to force Jalen Daniels into throwing a pick, which isn't going to happen, and since they go on to miss a field goal, we have an opportunity to go up 14-0, to zero, but Shadur didn't throw it hard enough. We cannot afford to make mistakes like that, because even though the Jayhawks aren't the best of teams, Luke Grimm has been dusting everybody, and he might single-handedly keep a minute, but we're stopping them on third down, so maybe their kicker can miss again, but this one is down the middle. I feel like Travis Hunter garners a ton of attention. Now, there were three defenders sinking him on that play, and it left Dawson wide open. You know what? I'm just gonna run beside him, as he's gonna take this one to the crib. We have gone into Kansas Stadium and played so well. Jalen Daniels is gonna actually throw it in this direction, and Travis Hunter comes away with interception. He stays in bounds, and what if he took this back to the house? Please be a pick six. Okay. Maybe he wasn't able to pull it off, but he could go for a touchdown grab here, which he does, and he drops it instead. That had the potential to be one of the best back-to-back -back plays ever, but instead, we're just gonna have to work it into the end zone another way, and I did not call for this ball, but it's gonna be picked. I guess Shadur Sanders wanted to throw to Dawson here, but he didn't get open, and that's the second time that we've turned it over when we're about to score, but our defense has been so good, and our offensive stats are kind of crazy. We've only rushed for 15 yards while throwing for 175, but that's what's been working for us, and there's so much space here. With a few seconds left in the half, Kansas isn't gonna hike the ball, so Jalen Daniels had bad clock management, and we're going into the half up by 18. Up to this point, we hadn't played a ranked school, but we're doing just as well against them as anybody else, and did Dawson just toast that corner for the second time today? I can't even complain Hunter isn't getting as many looks because his teammates have been amazing, and I'd love to see him catch another touchdown here, and he is open, but he drops it. I don't understand how the best player in the country isn't holding on to this ball, but Heisman mode always cheats like that. There's stuff that doesn't go your way, even though it definitely should have. If Kansas comes back after that, I'm gonna be so upset, and thankfully, we've worked it down the field on them again, but Travis Hunter needs to get in here, and that was not the right move. Third and goal. He is open in the flat. Just throw it to him, Shadar. Fight your way in. Come on. That is a grown man's play from the projected first pick in the draft. And on this fourth and 11, we just need to hold the Jayhawks one more time as they're going to go to Devin Neal, who is not going to go the distance. It is awesome that we were able to go onto the road and make Kansas look silly. Travis Hunter is about to score again, and he actually has a chance to do so because our run got stopped twice, and this route is going to be just short. He created all the separation that he needed, but he just wasn't able to keep his feet inbounds. And because of that, he didn't win player of the game. He didn't even have the most receiving yards on our team, but I'm not too worried about it because we're up to number 11. And he also had an interception in that game, which boosts him even more. I also have to note that he's leading the country in receiving yards. And since he's cleared a thousand of them, he's completed the second challenge of the video, but there's still plenty of work that needs to be done. And before we see how the rest of the year plays out, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks. With football going on, this is the best time to get the app and you can play in over 30 states. So there's a good chance yours is eligible. Anyways, you're probably wondering what Prize Picks is and on there, you simply pick higher or lower on player projections and you can win up to 25 times the money if you're right. I love using it when I watch football. So if you want some free cash to start out with, Code Board will double your initial deposit up to $100. And since they have almost any sport that you could think of, you might as well take advantage of that. Anyways, remember to play responsibly and I don't think beating Kansas State at home is gonna be a problem, but we've also been having so much success that I'm afraid something's gonna have to give. Here on fourth and three, I have toasted the linebacker on this side of the field, but I'm not gonna make the catch. And that's unfortunate because Shadar put this ball in the perfect spot. Normally we're really dominant on defense, but Kansas State is gonna score a touchdown. So that obviously is not the ideal start, but I'm gonna find the open space in the cover three. And on second and goal, Travis Hunter just needs to create a little bit of separation. There's still a lot of time left in this game. And here on third and 13, I'm hoping this is a deep streak that I can 
can bait the quarterback on, but that was a dot. Deion Sanders has Travis Hunter on a blitz on this play, but it's not going to get in in time. So I'm just glad that we were still able to hold them. And hopefully that can lead to a touchdown. Travis Hunter is going to get a big rush here. And it would be nice to get another touchdown already. It looks like Shader is taking off though when he runs in. On a third and 10 for the Wildcats, they just went with a halfback draw. So with a minute left in the first half, we are only going to be up by four. And midway through the third quarter, this is definitely cover two. So there's a ton of open space. It's not been our best performance, but the defense is still holding it down. And I'm sensing a big play is coming here. I have run right by the safety. Shader Sanders hits me right in the hands, but I can't get farther than the five. So Travis Hunter is going to have to finish it off on another play and he doesn't get the ball. If we could just hold Kansas State one more time, that would completely seal it for us. And on second and two, I'm sensing the run is coming, which happened. That was a big stop right there on third and four. We need to intercept that ball, but it's still not over. And we just have to watch as the onside kick sails out of bounds. I'm not 100% certain, but this feels like the most points we've given up in a game in a long time. And since both teams would score a garbage time touchdown, it's no surprise that that's the worst our defense has done. I didn't think our win was that impressive, but they've shot us up to number five in the polls. And Travis Hunter is still on top of the Heisman race. He's also a national semifinalist for a ton of different awards, but I'm not sure how much longer we can keep up this winning streak. I mean, it's a good thing the rest of the Big 12 has been terrible, but at some point, something fluky is bound to happen, and that corner route was underthrown from Shadur Sanders. That should have gone to Travis Hunter. I'm gonna have to make a tackle here, and I can't even do that. All he had to do was set his feet, but he decided to throw it on a fadeaway. And I don't know what happened because we were playing so well up until the last couple of matchups. We're ending the first quarter down by seven, and this is an option play of some sort, so I'm going to be curious if Shadar makes the right read, and I was wide open. I'm not sure why Deion Sanders is calling all of these jet sweeps, but they're not working out too well for us. And we've gotten to a third and eight where they're running man coverage, which is a bad idea. Here in the second quarter, another jet sweep to Travis Hunter, and he's still been solid on defense for us, but they just don't throw in his direction. That's why it's such a big deal that he's focused on his wide receiver abilities because he's still putting up good numbers, and we could really use pick Picking up this third and long, Travis Hunter is going to make the one-handed grab to get us inside the 10. And even though the throw was a bit too far in front of him, he still made a spectacular grab. The issue though is we are on a third and goal, so if we don't pick this up, we're going to have to take our three. And did he just make another one-handed catch for the touchdown? He is starting to really showcase his best abilities. And since this is a third and 26, it would be almost impossible for Iowa State to pick it up, so we're going to stop him again. It is remarkable that we're still undefeated up to this point in the year, and Travis Hunter is really going for it. I don't know what I would have even reacted with. With if he could have pulled that in. But after a missed field goal, Iowa State has worked it down the field and that is not good for us. They've gotten it within a possession with all three of their timeouts remaining. So we're going to need to pick up at least one first down and this jet sweep isn't doing it. We might as well pass on third and four and this is a wide open catch for Travis Hunter to make and he is just fighting. I can't believe we barely took down two and six Iowa State, but at least the undefeated season is still going and it would be hard to lose out on making the Big 12 championship now. But BYU is six and three, so they're no slouch and we're going to have to play this one on the road. On paper, since they come in at a 90 overall, they size up pretty well against us, but they've never had to try and stop someone like Travis Hunter before, and that should have been a touchdown. All Shadur Sanders had to do was put a little bit of air on that ball, but instead he beamed it right to the defender, and on third and five, now they're going to pick this up, of course. If we're going to do anything in the playoffs, we can't afford to keep making these early mistakes, and I'm hoping that was enough to knock them out of field goal range, but it looks like it wasn't. We're just going to need to start scoring more points again. The offense has been a little bit lackluster, and Travis Travis Hunter here is going to spin a couple guys out and break more tackles. He is going for a lot of yards. By midway through the second quarter, he hasn't done much since then, but Dylan Edwards did rush for a touchdown. And why did he pass it all the way over there? Shadur could have gotten us an easy first down, but he made it difficult. And this is the perfect spot for a corner route that's going to get wide open. Travis Hunter has now set a school record for receiving yards in a season. And here on third and four, they just went with the run, which we clamped up. Even though it seemed like we were going to have another rough game approaching halftime, we have an opportunity to go up 21 to three. And Travis Hunter's probably in man coverage here, which isn't going to work. This is exactly how we needed to play in our last two matchups. And I am thrilled that we're getting back in a rhythm as no one on this field is going to stop Travis Hunter. This is not a ball that you normally want to throw to a wide receiver, but he made the most of it and he's going to get another touchdown. If he could catch another one or two, there's a chance that this could be his best game ever. And down on the goal line, they're leaving this sorry corner on him. And I don't understand why. Maybe we could mix in an interception or something as well. That would be special. And Deion Sanders has pulled the starters on the offensive side of the ball, but on the defensive side of the ball, he's still out there. In the end, we won 42 to three. And of course, Travis Hunter won player of the game. So I don't see how he could lose the Heisman now. And next up is one and nine Cincinnati. We shouldn't struggle at all in this game. And we've already scored a touchdown, but Travis Hunter just got his first catch. He needs to keep putting up video game numbers and that's another touchdown. But what would be really special is if he could start racking up some more defensive stats. He's already easily the number one player in the country.
country, but I'd also love to see him win some other awards like the one that goes to the number one cornerback and what a terrible throw. It's still remarkable to see how much this defense has improved in a year and holding teams under 10 points has been such a common occurrence for us. Travis Hunter just sat in the hitch there to get this ball and after the catch, he is amazing as this one's gonna go to the crib. I am highly encouraging all of you to try this on your own time because using a player like him has been such a unique experience and that's a laser. Somehow Travis Hunter just caught his 28th touchdown as well and I had no idea that we had been feeding him that much. I was not expecting to see him in the NCAA record books, but all that's left on our schedule now is Utah who is now not even ranked, so there's no telling how good we actually are because we've been playing bad teams all season. Early on against Utah, we've already gone down 7-0 and they're threatening to score again, so I'm a tad bit concerned and Travis Hunter is going to have to make the tackle here, which he does. Holding them to 3 is going to only make it 10-0 and on the final play of the first quarter, just throw up a 50-50 ball to Travis Hunter. We need to get something going. This one is not going the way I imagined it would and they're about to score another touchdown, so this is very concerning for a team that needs to be good in the playoffs, but Travis Hunter can fight and we're finally about to score with a little inside route. I don't know what has happened to our defense though as we just continue to give up points except there's an interception and thankfully we finally caught a break. Going into the half down 24 to 7 would have been brutal but now if we could just get the ball back and hold him to a field goal it would only be a two possession game and I might as well send in a little pressure with Travis Hunter. He's not going to get the sack but we still are as a team which is perfectly fine with me. At this point I'm not worried about stats but that was some bad defense. I'm almost certain that's the first touchdown Travis Hunter has given up all season but it was a rough one and what is Shadur doing here? I'm going to try to block for him on the run. He breaks a tackle and of course he fumbles it back to Utah. This has just been such a painful matchup and we are going to hold them on third down here but if we can't start scoring some points it's not going to matter and it is time for Travis Hunter to cook. We almost have no choice but to go for it on fourth and 12 where I'm going to come away with the catch and break a tackle. Come on Travis just go to the end zone. That was so close to being the game changing play that we needed but that throw is terrible and I'm going to need Shadur Sanders to hit me right in the chest here which he does. The two point conversion is the big one though and on the slant that's going to be caught and it was unnecessary to use one hand but at least it worked. Third and one undefeated season on the line they go with the run and Travis Hunter just got laid out that could have been a tackle for a loss but Jaquindon Jackson just destroyed him and if we can't clutch up on this next third and three we're going to be in a ton of trouble but we're going to make the tackle for a loss so the comeback hopes are alive and this looks like some soft coverage where Travis Hunter's going to just make the catch and no way he got caught. Third and inches he has broken free and he is going to catch it which is going to result in a touchdown and we have tied it up at 23 if we get the two-pointer but that is much easier said than done and just throw it in his direction. Travis Hunter has gotten us back in this game and he could have gotten an interception there but the route bounce is going to crush him and I was not expecting that. We are going to lose. No. All we can do is watch as the undefeated season is over but maybe just maybe there can be a miracle on the Hail Mary and Shadur is going to throw it up where Travis Hunter is going to get underthrown. That is it and this isn't how I wanted to go into the Big 12 championship because now there's a good chance that we don't get a first round buy and I just realized that if we don't win this, we might not have a playoff spot. That is terrifying, especially since our schedule's been so weak, but hopefully we've gotten all of the bad play out of our system, and Travis Hunter's gonna start it out by toasting that cornerback. He beat him one-on-one, -on -one and that is gonna be a house call. He has helped Shadur Sanders set a new school passing record, and on the Horn Frogs' first drive, I'm hoping we can force a three and out, but that's not happening. I really can't tell if the quality of our opponents has just been that bad or what, but our defense is starting to get torched, and I would love if we could hold TCU to a field goal here, which we seem to do. However, Travis Hunter got hurt for the first time with a bruised knee for two quarters, and by the time he's finally back out there, we're trailing to TCU 17-14, to so we need to score. If he's going to win the Heisman, he can't have a bad performance, but he's working with limited time, and even though things started off so smooth for like the first 13 weeks, now things are starting to get rough. We just have to find our way into the end zone, and this corner route's going to be wide open to Hunter. So approaching the end of the third quarter, we have a lead again, and on this play, I've had to guard three players, but it ended up working out. Things are starting to swing in our favor, and Travis Hunter just broke that press, so he should be able to take this to the crib, but he's so tired from playing on both sides of the ball, and if he wasn't, that would have been a house call. It's very frustrating, but I'm still confident in our ability to finish this drive off, and I'm hoping he can find his way into the end zone again, but the ball isn't even going in my direction. Luckily, Jimmy Horn Jr. came away with a fantastic snag, and everything has changed so quick. I'm trying to bait the quarterback here, but I can't get there in time, and I feel like that's been the story of Travis Hunter's defensive season, so he only has a few interceptions, and we have got to make the tackle. This one is still very far from being over. And this is a big two-point conversion where they're just going to go with a run to Morris. Because they're expecting a run, I think it's smart to start out with a pass, and Travis Hunter created a ton of separation, which started a drive that got us to this point in the field while he took a break because he was tired. And you can't come back from resting to dropping this football, which would have been so clutch. This is very risky, but Deion Sanders wants to go for it on fourth and five, and 
Travis Hunter is open. He holds on to it. So it has been a dog fight, but TCU is going to lose this game. And there's the Big 12 championship trophy that we have definitely earned. Also, Travis Hunter only played two quarters, but he dominated. So it's obvious why he had so many first place votes for the Heisman. And that's not the only award he got, as he also won the Thorpe for the best defensive back. And with almost 2,000 receiving yards, I also see the Bednarik and the Walter Camp up here. It's hard to believe how dominant he was on both sides of the ball. But unfortunately, since our schedule was so easy, we're not getting seeded over Ohio State or Oregon. And it looks like Florida is going to be our first round matchup. Their only losses have come to new SEC schools, Oklahoma and Texas. But we have the number one defense in the country on our side. And of course, Heisman winner Travis Hunter. It is snowing in Boulder, which also makes our home field advantage even greater. And it's time to see how this Colorado team measures up against teams that aren't in the Big 12. Florida's been moving it down the field on us pretty effortlessly so far as we're giving up another first down. But after they got inside the 15, we've gotten them to a third and nine where we're going to hold them. And I don't think giving up three is too bad, especially because Travis Hunter has been so good recently. My biggest fear is he's going to get injured in this game like he did against TCU, but he catches that. And on first and goal with man-to-man -man coverage, we're going to easily score. Also, I did forget to mention it, but we have completed all five of these challenges. So the fact that we're even in a position where we could win a playoff game is incredible. I was not expecting for us to be this good, but now that we've gotten in this position, anything's possible and that's a touchdown for Travis. Unfortunately, since then, everything's gone downhill as the Gators are about to take a three-point lead. And I would love if we were able to end the first half with at least getting a field goal to tie it back up at 17. With that catch, Travis Hunter has broken another NCAA record, and he's clearly going to be the number one pick in the draft, but we need to have success with him. When you have a player of his caliber on your team, I feel like you should make a deep playoff run, and there's a reason he's been peppered with nine targets in the first half alone. With eight seconds left, we have no timeouts, so we can't afford to get tackled in bounds. And what did Shadur Sanders just do? It looks like Dylan Edwards has picked it up, but he's going down. And this defensive play from Florida could come back to be the reason that we lose this game. We were so close to tying it up, but now we're going to have to work even harder to do so. And on this crossing route, that is barely going to be caught. To be honest, I can't believe Shadur even threw it into that window, but he trusts Tunner to make those catches. And here's another one. It is remarkable how good of a game he's had, but what just happened? Shadur Sanders had Travis Hunter wide open, but he just threw it away instead. And we are all tied up at 17 because of that. On this third and 10, though, we are going to get the interception. Cormani McLean's going to take it and please finish it off. What a play from the former five-star recruit to give us a lead. And on the next third and 10, the Gators just ran it. So we are starting to take control of this football game. And Travis Hunter is so open here that I'd be disappointed if he couldn't finish this off with a touchdown, but he's going to be short. Maybe this time Shadur will hit him for the slant. And the Gators have just collapsed right in front of our eyes as we are going to hold them again. It looks like we're going to move on to the second round where we're going to have to take on USC. And that's Deion Sanders' first playoff win. It looks like Travis Hunter had his best game ever, and we're going to need him to do it again in the quarterfinals. The Trojans haven't lost a single game this season, so I know that this is going to be a very difficult matchup. But what I wasn't expecting was Caleb Williams to still be playing as a senior in college instead of going on to the NFL. Stopping the Trojans was already going to be hard enough, but now we have to also hold Caleb Williams, who is really, really good. So we're very fortunate they only got a field goal, but we're a bit more aggressive. I love that decision from Deion Sanders to go for it on fourth and five, and Jimmy Horn Jr. is going to put us up seven to three. The problem is USC keeps working it all the way down the field on us and Lloyd's going to get to the one. So we have got to hold them on third and goal and Caleb Williams runs it in. If we can't keep up with them offensively, it's going to be a long day. And that was the worst curl route ever, which is also going to be intercepted by Kalen Bullock. Well, it is now 17 to seven and I'm going to try to beat this guy over the top. But why did Shadur Sanders throw it in our direction so early? Now we have to go back and try to make a tackle. But I'm just not happy with how this game's opened up. And here on third and goal, they are going to not hold on to it. That was a big stop because ever since then we've kept it within two possessions but offensively it has honestly just been a very long game and Travis Hunter is going to break free on the wide receiver screen this is the break that we needed we just need to continue to feed him and he is so open on this play please keep your feet in bounds and on second and one it's man-to-man -man coverage which is a bad bad idea however it seems like the ref saw something he didn't like and thank goodness it was on USC it shouldn't be too hard to punch it in as Travis Hunter is just going to have to block and hope for the best I don't know what's happening but evidently we went with the read option and Shadur Sanders just didn't really get any Anywhere. That makes this a crucial third and goal and Travis catches it, which means we're back within a possession. And on third and eight, we just got to get a stop on USC, which we are going to do. We might have gotten off to a rough start, but now I'm confident in this team because Travis Hunter has been very hard to stop. And now Shadur Sanders is taking off for what looks like a 15 yard run. We might need to start being careful about taking some clock with us before we score too quick and Travis won't get anywhere. But what I'm afraid of is giving Caleb Williams too much time. And I think that's going to happen. You can only run down so much before it's just better off if we score the touchdown now. But running the ball on USC has not been working out for us. So we're going to resort to passing and Travis Hunter didn't get
get any separation. That was a terrible call for the ball. Why did he do it? That outside route has gotten open all year, but Caden Bullock stuck to him like glue. And we're gonna need to make sure that we stop the run three times in a row, which seems like a real possibility that we could even potentially get a safety. This third and seven is so big and they're actually going with the pass, which I wasn't expecting. Travis couldn't get down to Lloyd and USC would just run out the rest of the clock from there. So it took a stacked USC team to knock out Travis Hunter, but I was still pleasantly surprised with how far we took Colorado and Travis Hunter's insane season resulted in him getting drafted by the Broncos. So that concludes his college career. But if you like this video, I think you all are going to like this one even more.